Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to get started with Polymer by adding the necessary scripts that we have downloaded into our project in the last video, and we're going to get going using our very first custom web component that comes with Polymer. So check it out. Let's get going right now. So in video number one, we downloaded Bower and we downloaded uh, Polymer with Bower. And it's sitting right here in our set of our Bower components. We have Polymer and Web Components.js. Actually, make let's make this code a little bit bigger here so we can see a little bit better what we're typing. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a component from uh, Google's catalog of components. Now we can get there simply by going to Polymer's website and then catalog. You'll notice a tremendous amount of elements here in Polymer's catalog. They offer iron elements, paper elements, Google Web Components, and you can read a little bit about these. Uh, there's all sorts of different classifications for types of custom components. However, we want to be going to Google Web Components because the one we're going to be grabbing is the Google Map. So we can just select Google Map from this list here, and it gives you a little documentation. Over here on the left-hand side, uh, it gives you a Bower command. So this is one of the reasons why we've been talking about wanting to use Bower because uh, Polymer integrates so well with Bower here that it just makes things quite a bit easier. So if we copy this Bower install command and come to our terminal and here I'm just going to paste this in. Uh, I'm in the root of our project and so I'm going to go ahead and click enter just copied and pasted directly. And you can see it's going to grab this component itself. Now when we head back to Sublime Text, um, you'll see we have some other folders here, including this Google APIs, Google Map, and um, we, in addition to our Polymer and Web Components. So the bundled elements that come with this Google Map, if we open up this Google Map folder, you'll be able to see we have Google Map Directions, Google Map Marker, Google Map Search.html, and Google-Map.html. All of these HTML files are different components. Since we want to just get going basically, I'm actually going to delete some of this stuff in our body here. We don't need that. Um, we don't need to reference any of these other scripts or this uh, Google Analytics script right now. In fact, there's actually a Google Analytics web component that we can get going later. So um, looks like I accidentally deleted the body. Let's re-add that. Okay, now inside of our body, we want to be able to add a component that is a Google hyphen map, like so, and then it has a close bracket. But right now, if we save this and head to our browser, let's come back to our project here and refresh. You'll see we have nothing, absolutely nothing. Well, we have to start referencing some JavaScript files and even an HTML file to get this working. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and add the webcomponents.js to our project here. So in the head of our project, we can just have a new script tag. And it's going to be type text JavaScript. However, with HTML5, you actually don't need the type here. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And let's just go ahead and the source um, SRC is equal to. And now we're going to uh, browse to the Bower Components folder to reference this file. So uh, since we're at the root of our document here, we can simply just say Bower underscore components forward slash web components. Uh, we're just grabbing the file path to this right here. Um, inside of here, we're going to be referencing the webcomponents.js file. Dot .js, like so. Now, if we come back to our project here, let's refresh. I'm going to check out the source. I'm going to click on this link and make sure that it has, in fact, found the script correctly. That way we just know that we had no typos there and that it is, in fact, loading up this webcomponents.js, which is really what we need to get Polymer going. Now, the next thing we need to get a custom element from Google's catalog of elements in Polymer is to add the element itself uh, via the HTML. Now, we do that with a link tag. So we can do that by typing link and you'll see that it defaults to rel stylesheet. We want this to be import instead of stylesheet. And we want uh, no sort of type here. We can just get rid of that. And we want the reference to be a path to the Google map.html. It's this file right here. Now we can just go ahead and 
Um, start this off by just grabbing this Bower Components forward slash because it's located in the Bower Components folder. And we're gonna now go to Google hyphen map which is the next folder, forward slash, and then we're looking for google-map.html. So we can just go ahead and paste this in here, .html, save this. Now, we should be free to use our new Google Map element in our project. So when I hit refresh, you'll notice nothing really happens, and it's really not showing up uh, strictly because it doesn't necessarily have a height out of the box, and we're not really passing in information. If we come out of our inspect element, you can see it is, getting some sort of default latitude and longitude. So let's go ahead and actually come into Sublime here. And we're going to come into our main.css file because that's what's linked here. Uh, you can go into any CSS file that you're using on your project. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this Google map element beforehand. And let's come to main and head to the bottom. And let's go ahead and just reference this as an element because we could do that um, instead of with a class or anything like that. And I'm just going to say height, and we'll just give this a height of 400 pixels for now. Um, you could give it a height of pretty much anything based on what you need. And we're just gonna give it a width of 100%. Of okay, and let's head back to our HTML and let's pass in some latitude and longitude to this. So one of the best features about web components besides uh, bundling up sort of custom functionality into an element is that they're able to use attributes. Now, so we have a Google map element. Instead of having to drop in this whole embed code, we can now actually give it things like latitude, like so, and uh, simply by giving it an equals and then a number value, it's actually going to be using that latitude. So let's go ahead and give it a latitude. Um, I just have one set here and then a longitude is also going to be needed. So we can type longitude is equal to, okay, and I have another value. Now let's go ahead and refresh our page and check it out. Now, as you can see, we have a Google map being rendered and let's get off of this in the inspector so it's not uh, highlighting it like crazy. Let's actually close this inspect. And that's actually not where I wanted it. So I just pasted in some latitude and longitude values that I had. I actually had uh, some weird values in there before, but now I have exactly what I want. 39.73 and negative 104.993. We come back and refresh you'll see that we have a google map and it's pointing to directly where we want it if you can uh come back here and let's modify this to say like negative 124 and refresh you can see it puts us in the ocean which should be off the coast of california here let me zoom out uh, there we go northern california so uh as you can see we have complete control over this map in a way that makes a lot more semantic sense looking into our html just imagine you were looking at any sort of html document and you see a whole block of embed code uh, it doesn't look this good this really tells you exactly what it's doing and that's wonderful so we've now imported our first element using Google's catalog from Polymer, and we're using a Google map simply by adding webcomponents.js and Bower underscore components, and then the Google map from within our Bower components. Uh, and this is all downloaded with Polymer, and it was super easy. So in the next video, we're gonna take this element apart and we're gonna check out what's going on and what it's doing. We may not understand it all until we start to really build our own elements, but it's a good start to see how we can use custom elements in our own projects and write our own. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.